every good movie is a masterpiece. No, it will turn out well. How will it? I don't know. It's a mystery. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 overrated movies. Your part is a racist prick. For this list, we're sticking to movies that had overwhelming critical acclaim or were even Academy Award winners or contenders. It pays a debt. But that may not have really deserved all that praise and hype. This means that not just any mind-bogglingly successful film counts. You heard us, Twilight. You're dismissed. No, no, thank you. Number 10. Atonement. I have to talk to you. A best picture nod? Really? Calm down, Atonement, with your seven Academy Award nominations. Who told you? The film isn't bad, but its praise exceeds its quality. I wouldn't necessarily believe everything Barney tells you. What set critics buzzing might be the A-list cast or the relative success of how it adapted its bestseller novel. Sorry. No. Still, the movie has a pretentious way of politicizing class and war. I could never marry a man who wasn't in the Royal Navy. And goes overboard in over-dramatizing its characters. Let me help with that. I'm all right, thanks. Take the flowers. I'm all right. Take the flowers. I'm all right. <laughs> with some of these scenes, we can clearly see the Oscar bait served up but it's not worth biting. I know what I did was terrible. I don't expect you to forgive me. Oh, don't worry, I won't. Number nine, Chicago. Give them just enough to get them good and hungry. But always leave them wanting more. It won the trophy, among other awards. Meaning what? And the year was far from a dry spell for good cinema. You can't do this to me. <laughs> you can't! Oh! While it prompted a fresh resurgence of the musical drama, Chicago is further proof that critics just spew compliments at any nicely performed 1920s period piece. You're damn right! With its lack of character development and the simplicity of its story, this one has far too much style and not enough substance. Wake up, kiddo. You ain't never gonna have an act. The original score and the musical numbers are often touted as some of its crowning achievements. But if that's the case, that's what the soundtrack album is for. Number eight, Life of Pi. I think you've set the stage. So far we have an Indian boy named after a French swimming pool on a Japanese ship full of animals heading to Canada. It's the survival story of a young castaway and practically every critic loved it because it was a creative project for director Ang Lee. Showing off like a dancer. The film adaptation of the Yan Martel novel starts off with a bold religious thesis that aims to prove the existence of God. God. Then beats us mercilessly with the narration of its own symbolism. Very impressive. Hi. Now sit down. That'd be all well and good if it stayed focused on its themes, but it's also a surreal 3D adventure movie and a good one. It is a lot to take in. Life of Pi has groundbreaking feats of visual effects work that earned awards, but in general, it's somewhat disorganized and mostly celebrated for its twist ending. So which story do you prefer? Number seven, The Butler. <laughs> it's a civil rights related story about a man who grew up on a plantation and ends up serving as the butler to multiple US presidents. So how can this movie not be critically acclaimed? Yeah. This was likely the perspective of the marketing executives that promoted the film's sensitive themes. Oh my God. Critics ate it up only because they were morally obligated to. Why is he forcing me to do this? While Forrest Whitaker does carry the film with the talent we'd expect of him. I'm Cecil Gaines. We're too inundated emotionally by shock value content and forced melodrama to see the film's strengths from any other angle. I guess I wish we were there for real instead of for show. Number six, Frozen. Let it go, let it go. Can't hold it back anymore. That catchy Oscar winning song is perhaps the only reason Frozen is the most successful Disney movie of all time. It was an accident. It's easy to believe that the powerful sisterhood of its protagonists is a game changer as it finally empowers Disney princesses. And that's because it actually is. Nothing's in my But it takes more than them not needing to be rescued by men to be as revolutionary as the critics keep insisting it is. Yeah, why? How about a main character that doesn't run from her problems? Actually, we agree. Let it go. Turn away and slam the door. 
Number five, Les Misérables. But my friend, you left so early. Surely something slipped your mind. It's an overrated musical that's trying too hard to be creative by recording its actors singing live instead of having them lip syncing the soundtrack as is done traditionally. Customers appreciate the bon viveur. Like to do a friend a favor. Unfortunately, this artistic misfire leaves the editor at the mercy of the cameraman's excessive close ups and shaky cam techniques. Turn your heart into stone. Judging by the rave reviews and Oscar nods, actors that sing while they perform were enough to power the hype machine. All it takes is money in your hands. But it also banked on the success of the renowned stage play it adapted. So different from this hell I'm living. Number four, Shakespeare in Love. Good title. An inventive rom-com for its time, perhaps, but far from deserving of best picture. I commend you! <laughs> this fictional story tells of William Shakespeare's personal and romantic life while he was writing Romeo and Juliet. It's as if my quill is broken. With Gwyneth Paltrow playing his muse. She is always Aphrodite. Aphrodite Baggett, who does it behind the dog and trumpet. Creative and well-executed as this was, it's yet another star-powered cast in flamboyant old costumes. Not the billing, the bill. Which must have encouraged film critics to put this on a pedestal. Also, the portrayal of Shakespeare as a suave womanizer is biographically inaccurate. I'll be damned if you are! As was the success of his play. Oh, I am fortune's fool! Number three. Crash. I need to talk to you for a second. The rave reviews were the first mistake. I think he hit his head. The Best Picture Oscar was the second. No, don't touch me, he cheat me. Right. A film with condescending social messages about stereotypes, race relations, and prejudice. You thought you saw a white woman blowing a black man that just drove you little cracker ass crazy. We just shut your fing mouth. Is criminal when it's this oversimplified and offensively preachy. Granted, the acting was its saving grace. And this time it'd be really fing great if you acted like you actually gave a shit. And that's probably why Crash gets an A for effort for daring to address tough topics. Mom, I can't talk to you right now, okay? I'm having sex with a white woman. But the Hollywood mob of interest in this film clearly made its reviewers exaggerate its virtues. My father's from Puerto Rico. My mother's from El Salvador. Neither one of those is Mexico. Uh, well then I guess the big mystery is who gathered all those remarkably different cultures together and taught them all how to park their cars on their lawns? Number two, The English Patient. The International Sand Club. The International Sand Club. Misfits, buggers, fascists, and fools. God bless us, everyone. Oops, mustn't say international. Dirty word, filthy word. This story about a nurse and her World War II crash victim's flashbacks features some decent cinematography, but doesn't really take its romantic drama to grand territory. Would you kiss me? No, I'll get you some tea. Instead, just settling on good. Yes. Sure, it's competent in every way. Nicely written, acted, and cast. But it's just unnecessarily long. What the bloody hell do you think you're doing? Actually, it's the 162-minute runtime that makes the film borderline boring. <laughs> Please. Especially for such a dramatic, existential think piece on identity. Lashing with apologies all around. Before we rate our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. That was me seducing you when it needs to be the other way around. Tina, eat. Eat the food. I want to get three feet up a bull's ass just listen to what sweethearts whisper to one another. You've got syphilis. That's not possible. Number one, Avatar. Guys. What's wrong with this picture? This is an unoriginal sci-fi morality tale about colonialism. Hey, wait a second. It's only as highly rated as it is because of the pioneering, expensive, and revolutionary technology behind its 3D visual effects and post-production. And they are very powerful. In a nutshell, its plot has been compared to those of legitimate classics like Pocahontas, Fern Gully, The Last Rainforest, and Dances with Wolves. Yeah, that's because we're not the only thing flying around out there. But what really gets critics hot for Avatar is the power and legacy of the James Cameron as director brand name. This is sad. 
The guy who brought you Aliens, Terminator 2, and Titanic just seems to have a Midas touch for film. Or does he? I mean, look at all that cheddar. <laughs> Do you agree with our list? Man, look around you, man. Which overrated movies did we miss? That's a terrible thing to hear. For more entertaining top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Sweet. Thank <music> you.